Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to more Smite action. This time around, we have two exciting top teams playing against each other. It's going to be SK Gaming versus Agilitas. And let's talk about this matchup. This one. This is the one you are tuned in for this week. I'll tell you that now because Agilitas and SK Gaming... This is the definition of what Bart calls a bomb burner. I'll guarantee you that now. <laughs> because both these teams are vying for the spot at LAN. And this is the second to last week they've got a chance of getting points. And they're so close that whichever team wins this game is going to go ahead of the other team in terms of points this week. And that means they're going to have a little step up above them as they move on to the final week. So this one is so big for SK Gaming and Agilitas. It's going to be crazy this game. Honestly, whichever team wins this are in a great position after to really try and stamp their authority on the tournament and get themselves that fourth spot or even possibly third now that we just saw worth gaming now known as coast have a pretty rough game yeah unfortunately they did have that dc and you know i got called out a little bit i said uh, initially that the dc didn't really impact the game and the bullies and the bullies won Maybe I worded that a little poorly. I think that the game might have gone longer if Variety had been in the game, but the shot calling for the bullies and the, the gameplay was just absolutely spectacular. And I think the result would have been the same. But looking at this SK Gaming and Agilitas storyline, these teams both have something to prove. SK Gaming coming from previous glory, showing up to the launch tournament and doing pretty damn well against Artemis. people that they weren't anticipated to do to do well against yeah um, i mean they made it to the third fourth place matchup yep. as well which was very very good for the oh. eu scene because everybody wrote us off right at the start until um, <laughs> tsm played and then we won it but hey you know we're not gonna fire shots at usa it's, it's too easy um but we're into this game now and we can see immediately the bands on the table thor osiris not a surprise to see the osiris oh. will come Kana once again and a yarnus ban and that's a big shout out to captain twig who played it last week and was outstanding yes. on his yarnus play Captain Twig, one of the better mids in the game. And, you know, as I started to say, SK Gaming, they have something to prove in the sense that they're previous greats. There's some roster changes, they had some growing pains, and they floundered towards the bottom of the brackets initially. But now as we get further and further along the way, SK Gaming, they took home a gold one week. They've been a performing baller. very well. And Agilitas also have something to prove, Hindu Man. They're coming out as they a do. new, younger team. They're players that perform very well in ranked, but haven't really made that transition to competitive and this season they're doing it so sk gaming wants to prove everybody that they're still around and they're still relevant and agilitas wants to make a mark on the scene so as you say there's implications mathematically for the land tournaments but there's also pride on oh, the definitely. line both of these teams will be going hard and not stopping for anything so when we look at how the game has panned out so far, we're going to see Aphrodite being picked up by SK Gaming. Now, Aphro is one of these gods, after that we don't get to see it often because she's mainly banned away as a lot of the solo laners and teams realize that she Athena. is this mage that is technically like the best support in the game, technically, but she'll go in the solo lane. And then when she links up with the team, she's Mercury. basically this monster that will make somebody indestructible. Bye. For example, Mercury or Hobois. Right. We're going to see the bands come out for SK Gaming all three jungle i think they are scared it's a good of focus. zindern <laughs> it's, it's a good it's a good focus target of zindern because zindern overall seems to be the shot caller for agilitas on that front and mm -hmm. focusing away his jungle options means that he's gonna have to go for something a bit more unorthodox than he would normally be used to however it looks like with that loki pickup instantly from agilitas that looks like that could be the jungle of this game yeah it's gonna be it's going to be funny. I think SK banned out Fenrir expecting Loki to go Agni. in the solo lane. And with this Agni lock-in that we see right here of Hindu Man, Loki, the first pick, will go into the jungle. And that'll prove their third ban as a waste for SK Gaming. I don't know if it was a waste, though, honestly, because I think Loki could have still gone solo, and they could have put Ra mid. And very, then when they true. saw the ban from Fenrir, they sat there and went, I know, we'll just play Loki jungle then, because, you know, we can't take the Fenrir that we wanted to. All they wanted to counter pick with Agni. I mean, it, it kind of bit of both, I guess, but it does work out, like you said, that SK Gaming seems to have wasted a ban because it looks like they're going to have jungle Loki. We don't know the ins and outs, though, you know? Sometimes you just you want to sit on comms with these teams and listen to what goes through <laughs> their minds so you get a better understanding of it. But these are the That's lineups true. on paper right now. We're going to see... Artemis and 
Bacchus in the in the duo lane. Now, a big shout out from Agilitas here. They banned away Geb and Kumba Karna from Badger. And that's a big shout out to him personally. They, that means they want him to play someone like Bacchus. They were expecting that, especially once they picked up that Athena, they were mm -hmm. able to try and force him into that sort of situation because they knew they had the first pick potential of the supports in the second round of banning. Very true. And as we've seen how we've seen how much teams really do love to pick up that Athena, we're gonna see how well she can use that global ult. Reels X gonna play one of his favorites, Artemis, the hunter he primarily played in the launch tournament. We'll see if he can do just as well here as he did there. For Hindu Man, my name is F Dodd. Stay tuned, we're gonna get back into the action. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the main show. We've got some more smite action going on. Lots of pings coming out. But that won't distract us. We have SK Gaming in the blue trunks. And on the right-hand side, in red, we have Atraxia Confrey, Kanye Life, Zinder, and Pretty Prime making up Team Agilitas. Now, this game, after I've just been looking through the past tournament weeks, and I don't think these two guys have actually met each other in the SWC so far. Nope. I don't think they've had the opportunity to. So this one is going to be interesting to see how they perform against each other. I'm sure they've played against each other in other tournaments, or at least in scrims together. So we'll see what sort of antics they're going to get up to. And look at this, antics from SK. They might catch out Kanye here, but Badger's going to walk around the corner immediately. He's going to look for the belly flop. Going to connect with two members, but no follow-up. Not in range with zeros there to look for the follow-up yeah this is a t this is a matchup that i have been salivating since looking at the brackets hindu man i think these teams are very very well set up i think they're very well matched up as well confrey does very well in the middle lane for himself captain twig some people call him the best mid in the game pretty prime plays a fantastic solo lane and maniac is one of the up-and-coming solos right here reels x is an amazing hunter and Ara and ataraxia has a lot to prove so that's that is where one of the more uh, interesting lanes is the dual lane badger and reels x are going against ataraxia and kanye life kanye Kanye is a very strong support. Badger is viewed as generally a role player. Adaraxia is sort of an unknown variable, as we all know what Reels X can bring to the table. And then taking a look at the jungle, Zeros is very good, but so is Zindern. So fantastic stuff coming out, and I'm excited as hell to watch this matchup. Definitely. One other thing to note as well, the two solo laners as well, FDOT, they're the ones to be spoken about because Confrey's very new to the team of Agilitas, and so is Maniac replacing NQ, who actually moved on away from SK. So both these have got something to prove for themselves as well in that solo lane to show how good they really can be for their team. One big shout out to make, though, is the fact that talking to Game Hunter and Zimstar earlier this week, they said their hardest opposition in SWC is SK Gaming. Mm -hmm. And since SK Gaming beat TS, them. They've started to be on this warpath and making a late run to get themselves to land. We're actually going to see a mix-up. Confrey is going to take Agni into the solo lane, while well, Pretty Prime takes Ra into the mid. That's an interesting situation. Uh, oh, Pretty Prime's getting poked out all the way out of mid. Unfortunately, that Captain Twig is as well. Both mid laners taking a lot of damage. The difference is Pretty Prime can heal it up. Captain Twig cannot. But as I was saying before, Confrey with Agni in the, in the solo lane is interesting. Yeah, it is going to be a, a weird one between the two because at least Confrey's going to have great push power against, in, during the early stages as well, against Maniac. So keep an eye on that one because Maniac's wave clear can be quite effective once the doves do come online properly. But mid lane, once again, the pokes between the two as Twig has used a health potion to sustain for the time being. Both of these have got to be careful of rotations from the jungle though. And you can see them both backing or at least playing very safe now because they're like, hang on a minute, the junglers have left the solo lane. We need to back up. 100%. Both junglers go to their respective safe camps, their back golds. Very safe plays, unique, or very not, as we see them working in tandem almost. This is a synchronized swimming. Both junglers are going to go ahead and grab their other safe back camps. Well, our lanes generally play passive, and right now the, the left hand, in the left-hand lane, Real X is getting pushed on by Agilitas. Yep, trying to keep the pressure on as early as possible. Athena's obviously got a bit more more effective lane presence than a Bacchus, especially if she can keep using the taunts against Badger to stop him being able to use that belt of the gods to help wave clear. So for the time being, you're going to see that being pushed in for now. But both teams feeding each other out in the early stages. No team wants to give anything away. However, Sonic Boom is online and Zeros is looking for it in this left-hand lane. He's already charged it up. He's going to go for the connection. It does land straight onto Artemis, who's in a lot of trouble here. Can she get it? Sorry, Apollo, who's in a lot of trouble. Can he get himself out of dodge? It looks like he might not do taunt. The charge was important from Kanye to apply a slow. But is he going to have the major look? He is. is. 
picks it up. Zeros, first kill of the game. SK Gaming take the lead. That's a great kill, and going, getting the Hunter as the first kill of the game is a very big deal. A lot of times we see Hunters in this stalemate match where everybody is generally even in their lane. But right now we have Loki engaging on the Badger. He took a lot of damage. The dot is still ticking on him, but he's going to be safe. Pop the potion, and he'll be able to heal that back up. Good rotation from Loki, but he just could not seal the deal. He needed a little bit more damage out of Zinder. That's right, and as you can see, he was just left to the mid lane is about the experience camps. However, Captain Twig took right alone, which is going to give him a small lead over Pretty Prime, but three members sharing that experience from Agilitas means that, you know, across the board, it should balance out well for them to get a small lead on their respective lanes at the cost of Pretty Prime. So, keep an eye on how that one's going to play out. as a 1-0 lead right now in favour of SK. We're going to see a return to, return to the passive play we saw originally. Zero's is going to join Captain Twig in the middle lane, just grabbing some farm as he does. Artemis is going to come back from the base and head back towards lane. Looking at the solo lane, Confrey and Maniac are generally the same. Confrey lagging behind by about half a level right here, and Maniac's going to take this opportunity to head to the base. Yeah, meanwhile, Reels just been back to base, has picked up the Dev Gauntlets too. So Curse Gauntlets online, not got the full completed one, wanting to get some extra sustain before going back to lane. So pretty equal between the two Hunters right now, even though we did see Atraxia dies first blood. That went across to Mercury though. So it's going to help Mercury a lot out in the jungle as well and just accelerating his build a little bit more and keep an eye on him because he's going to be looking for those Sonic Booms all day long down those lanes. And it was a great first gank. It... it Definitely was, as we, we talked a little bit earlier about how the stalemate can happen with the Hunters. Reels is going to be able to have a little bit of a lead against you. are going to get hit a little bit by the Athena. Not too much of consequence, though. Bacchus has returned to the lane. It's again, a 2v2. So golden experience at the moment, 300 gold experience, sorry, gold advantage for SK Gaming, but that's insurmountable. Experience is pretty much even right now, tied right up. And that shows right how hand close lane. these two teams are. Confrey was getting aggressed on pretty heavily with the addition of Zero showing up in here, but a fantastic ult coming out from Kanye Life on that Athena, providing some protections for Maynard's gonna be careful. Maynard's gonna be careful because he rotated in looking for extra aggression on Confrey. Now he's gonna get caught out of position. Back off used immediately. No taunt coming out from Kanye for now though. But now Confrey takes some more poke again from the doves and the kiss connects. Not gonna find the rain of fire though. And so he's gonna have to back off and limp home back to base more than likely as Maniac deals with those minions. Unfortunately, Confrey missed all three of his bobs, including the stun one, so that's going to be a big deal, but Athena does go ahead and look for a steal, not able to take anything down. Both blue and red buff are down. She doesn't know that yet. She's going to see that. In addition, she sees that the XP camps are down. Going to post a really deep ward for her troubles, and that'll allow them to see exactly where Zeros is going, especially with that long-range ultimate. So small experience lead in the jungle for Zeros over Zindern right now. And that, some of that comes down to the kill. As you can see, the taunt landing and the Celestial Beam not going to connect, though. But nice poke from the spout coming out from Haboa there just to disengage for now. As the mid comes due to spawn up, you can see all the teams starting to rotate to this middle area and try and get in a good position. Left hand side is going to be careful, though, because if Agilitas ro rotate over there, SK could get caught out. Reels is going to rotate over here. He's going to help Badger grab the mid camps. Recognizing long. he's been a little too long, he's going to go ahead and head back to his lane. Of course, Apollo can stay in lane a little bit longer than than Artemis because he does have that across the skies. Oh, Reels is going to lose a couple of minions to the tower, unfortunately, but he does manage to save the archers and get one of the me melee minions. So, yeah, good, good it. job. Doesn't pay off overall. I mean, he wanted to rotate and get a little bit of an experience lead over Apollo. Not going to pay off, though. Took too long about it and ended up detracting from that for the most part. But Golf Fury is available. It's not been contested just yet because both teams are so close and tight. They don't want to give anything up. They realize the importance of this game. And that's what you're going to find, FDOT, in these games is that when so much is on the line for these two teams right now in this game, they're both not going to give an inch if they can help it. So they're going to play very, very safely for the most part. And it's going to come down to big plays that make the difference. Right here, SK is planning a big play. Look at this. We see Zeros charging up the ultimate. Badges faking a back. Reels is hiding behind the rock. They're going to surprise the duel late. I think they wanted them to engage onto Badger, not knowing that Reels was hiding behind the rock, and Zeros would come up the lane. Fantastic planning right there. Unfortunately, Agilitas did sniff it out, so Mercury is going to go back to farming into the jungle.
Yep, so everybody just going to reposition themselves again, looking for an opportunity. Only two experience camps on the map available as Gold Fury is being looked at right now by Agilitas, or is it? But the ward's going to give away vision as they rotate around, looking for an opportunity to get onto Reels here by the looks of it. That ward giving plenty of vision. You can see immediately Reels is like, yeah, I'm just going to stay at the tower, thanks. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not interested, just for the time being. Thanks very much. So it's going to be a very edgy game. Keep an eye on these ward placements, because one missed ward placement could be a death, as we see Captain Twig probably going to get aggressed on here. He must know something's up as he throws out the wet paper. Sonic Boom for the counter gank that wants his Zindern. And there's a the crushing wave. He's not going to connect. And now Captain Twig's in trouble. Not going to have the wet paper to slow it, speed himself up. But Zindern, sorry, Zindern goes aggressive again. He's going to go down. And now Badger's rotation may pay dividends overall and give SK their second kill of the game. That is a fantastic counter initiation coming out from SK Gaming. Zeros did miss the Sonic Boom, but it got him into position well enough to be able to get the special delivery that not only saved Captain Twig's life, but also brought Zindern back to the base. So that's going to be not just First Blood previously, but that's going to go, as you said, the second kill for SK Gaming, and they are off to a fantastic start. And you talked about this jungle and matchup as well. Zindern and Zeros are so well known as well for being great junglers. And, and at the moment, Zeros is having the better time of it. As right inside, Maniac could be aggressed on here by Kanye Life. He needs to watch his position as the minions are going to push him into tower. He's going to back away. Talk going to land. I don't think they're going to get much more out of this. Or are these? The stun connects and the fire bombs do rain down. But, you know, it is Aphrodite. She's got ridiculous sustain with the doves. Mid comes shoot to spawn. You know, we mentioned it in passing before, as we see a three-man rotation for Jilatas' blue buff, but we mentioned it in passing, and they might collapse on a Zeros and Captain Twig right here. They're going to play it safe. But the ward positioning is impeccable because they know that they're playing against a Mercury. And when Mercury came to the forefront in uh, the Paths of the Smite Launch Tournament, when he was being played and banned out a lot, this is what teams knew to do. Left mid are going to go ahead and go to SK Gaming. You put the wards in at the jungle entrances in between towers one yep. and two. That's where Mercury is going to come around from behind the tower, charge its ult, and hit you in the middle of the lane. You put the wards right there, you're not going to be surprised by a sonic boom. That's why Agilitas has been able to react each and every time. For the time being, it's 2 0 to SK Gaming. However, experience has climbed in their favor because of that. And the big difference is between the two junglers right now. Zeros is level 12, Zindan only level 9. He's not been able to get himself on the scoreboard just yet, but both those kills going to Zeros as well has made a big difference for him in this matchup of the junglers right now. Having a bigger impact, but as we know, Loki can turn things around so very quickly if he gets an opportunity. He definitely can, but it's an uphill battle for Loki. Loki traditionally has a hard time clearing the jungle, even when he's even. And if you put Loki behind, it can make things even more difficult for him. Over time, the jungle minions do get more powerful. And unfortunately, it's time-based, not player-level-based. So Zindern is going to have to find some way to catch up. And right now, he's looking for a kill in the duo lane. Does not realize there's Nobody a ward wants. there. Covered in what he uses the vanish. There's the Olympus used though from Kanye Life. They're gonna go aggressive Beautiful. onto Reels. Reels is gone. He can't get out of that one. Even with the ball there, the taunt onto Badger now. Badger could only really stand and watch there. And even with the wards there and the vanish being seen popped, they could see him disappear. They were not prepared for that all-in damage that came out. That was a really good play from Agilitas and shows why they're running Loki Athena. When you draft this team comp, Hindu man. That's what you dream of. As we see a good initiate onto the enemy hunter, and just like Reels was deleted, Ataraxia is gone. That's going to be hunter for hunter, as disjointed as it was. Three to one for the kills. Yeah, three to one, but all the only the junglers are the ones with the kills for their team right now. So they're going to be the big impact makers for this game right now. Golf Fury, though, could be looked at at the moment by SK. No, they're just going to clear out the ward there. Good decision from them. And you'll see someone rotate over there very, very quickly from Agilitas to make sure it's not being done. Because they need to keep their eyes open. That you know, it's not being just sneakily done by Mercury and Badger. Oh, well, they've got faith they haven't. Okay. I was expecting them to go straight over like... <gasps> They could be doing Gold Fury, but nope, not this time for the time being. It's still 3 to 1, Golden Experience, both in favor of SK Gaming. And like you said, you know, Loki in the jungle, it's, it's an uphill battle, but he's trying to fight back into this one. Right, that kill that, that kill onto Reels definitely helps him out a lot, unfortunately. And, and as far as him clearing the jungle camps, he's just about he has one just about finished with that heart seeker, has to finish out rank three. Meanwhile, the other jungler is going ahead and build Devo gloves. 
He's three levels ahead as well, and you can see the decoy being used by Zindon, hoping for the proc to get one of those camps. I think he picks up one, not the other one, though, as left hand side is due to spawn for Badger. But Badger's got to be careful because Kanye's in the area as well as Zindon. Got a bit of time, though, until they spawn, so going to be able to reposition as a spout lands on Zindon in middle lane, and he's got to watch his positioning. Left camps might go to SK Gaming again. They do with a good rotation from Reels. Reels is making sure to rotate over for these mid camps. That's something we see him do a lot. Uh, you know, I'm not ready to call it an SK Gaming strategy. It's really just having the Hunter rotate with the support. Not exactly game breaking, but it's something that we see this dual lane do consistently. And Reels makes it back to lane without missing a beat. So good this play. If this game continues as it is, F dot, I think after the game, if SK come out on top because at the moment in the lead, then it could all come back to this Loki pick for the jungle and whether or not, like you said, that Fenrir ban forced the Loki to go jungle or this was their plan all along to try and bait into this Loki pick that is not paying off fully just yet as you see Confi getting aggressed on in the solo lane. That seems to be working out for them though, this Agni pick. Seems to be going okay in the solo lane. Yeah, it's definitely going out, going very well. Agni is one of the top tier mages one of the better mages around and putting him in the soul lane giving him a blue buff with an ultimate that is generally more a four, fourth ability than a traditional ultimate that's manalus having blue buff just makes it even more nasty that dash is going to be great especially when he's Sonic already boom. avoiding the kiss sonic boom is going to miss but special delivery doesn't good beans gets him out and there comes the ultimate from athena to help him survive dubs just barely going to cut it short and confrey is going to go home safe he's going to go home safe, and I think some of that does come down to Kanye Le life. It does give protections when he uses that Olympus, and that seemed to play into that one for the time being. And one thing to note as well, because when we're talking about Confrey playing this Agni, is the Gold Fury started by SK Gaming, actually. We'll come back to Agni. Is Gold Fury being contested on right now? Atraxi is well aware of it. I saw his pretty prime. The saving paint does not connect, and now they're looking for the aggression, and he's going to go over to SK Gaming. This was a great call from them, but Captain Twig could pay for his life. He will do, but not without getting some damage off in return. Crushing Wave. No, he picks him again! Killing's still alive! What is this? We can see Maniac rotated in to help him out and Comfrey's here as well. But holy moly, Twig survives. Captain Twig, slippery as ever. Gonna go ahead and survive. That's an 0 for 2 trade in addition to the Gold Fury. Or despite the... In addition to the Gold Fury. You can take a look at the graphs. The gold difference has an insane spike at the 15 minute and 10 second mark. And that's basically Gold Fury and two kills. That's what we're looking at, and SK Gaming just pulled that out of nowhere and catapulted them to an almost 3,000 gold lead 15 minutes into this match. Really big. Oh, Comfy might be able to pick up Maniac here. Gonna drop him very low under the tower. But while you were saying, I mean, that all came from when they went aggressive. We saw Zeros rotate over. Sorry. We saw um, Agilitas rotate all the way over and try and put the pressure down and put the pressure onto Comfrey. It didn't pay off for them. And immediately SK Gaming like swung to the other side because they expected people to rotate over and made something happen on the other side of the map. So really good shot calling coming out from SK Gaming. And it's given them this very early lead for the time being. We'll see how this one goes out as Badger going aggressive near these mid camps with Captain Twig once again. That was a fantastic play, a team oriented play. Captain Twig, slippery as always, as we said, but definitely got helped out by that Aphrodite. A great link and just saving Captain Twig, and that's why she's drafted here. Captain Twig on the Habwa is one of the squishiest characters in the entire game so you have to provide him a little bit of help and right now badger needs some help getting caught out but he is a tanky bacchus level 11 has level 2 steel mail not quite with the sovereignty yet but the stats on that 200 help and physical protection that's good enough you're always tanky when you're drunk you know Do you see this again they're doing it again yeah, they go for it over again, looking for the bait. There's a Sonic Boom, going to connect. Ah, Traxi is going to get away, though, for the most part. And he's not going to pay off this time round, but going to be able to get a bit of tower pressure with that minion wave built up. But both healthy enough to be able to defend this one for the time being. As Habwa pushes down mid against Pretty Prime. And there's a big level lead disparity between the two right now in the middle. Yeah, it's, uh, they forced that one, Hindu Man. I think they're really proud of the play that they've thought up. Uh, which, you know, hide the Hunter, hide the Mercury, get them to attack the lone support, and then make them pay for it. They're really proud of that strategy. They, they didn't can't. get to pull it out last time, and they, tr they tried to force it this time. Aggression on SK in all lanes right now. Maniac pushing Confrey near his blue buff. Dual lane is pushing Atraxia and Kanye onto their tower. You have the jungle helping out Captain Twig in here. SK Gaming is just on an all-out offensive right now. 
Yeah, they're in a good position right now, Dev. What they're doing is just abusing the fact they've realised they've got a lead and they're trying to continue the pressure of this lead and take down some more objectives if possible or pick up more kills and force people into fights they don't want to have, especially being behind. So keep an eye on this one as this goes on because SK Gaming trying to start to snowball this as Zinder's going to make a late play here, but Zeros is here. Zinder's going to be careful. Oh no, this could go terrible. That's the combo we saw before. Works so well. This time, not so much. Apollo comes down from the ground. Really oh, Prime! One in the back with a great snipe coming out from Pretty Prime. Full length snipe goes oh, Prime. the way of the Ra. Caledonian board doing work. Real Zex gonna get taunted into the shield wall, but it's down. He's fine. So he's gonna turn around, shoot some shots at the enemy hunter while Badger bounces back to safety. Prime turned that one around and made it a one for one. Zindern was going down for certain there. As soon as I saw him going in, and you know, when you're playing Loki and that happens, you're like, I'm gonna die here. Because that guy was not. So why, why is the Mercury here? It was supposed to be me ganking. I'm in trouble. But hey ho, I'm in here now. Might as well do it. <laughs> Might as well see if we can pick up a kill. <laughs> Doesn't find it, but Pretty Prime makes them pay and manages to pick it up. For the, with the snipe, which makes it pay off, but mid lane took so much damage from Captain Twig because of that, it's going to drop down, and that means SK come out on top. Yeah, boy, I was going to go ahead and pick that up. Great play coming out from Twig, knowing that he didn't have to rotate. A lot of mid laners might have rotated just to seal the deal, but the additional damage from Twig wasn't necessarily needed, as they got what they, they made the counter gang successful. They got what they needed, and Captain Twig was able to just stay in lane while Pretty Prime oh. rotated. And both camps in the middle going to go in favor of SK once again just to extend their experience in gold lead right now. 3,000 gold, 6,000 experience in favor of SK Gaming. And when we look back at the solo lane, I mean, it's been a bit quieter over here recently. After One thing I did want to notice was that Agony went for his first time of Divine Ruin just to reduce the amount of heals coming out from Maniac oh, in this lane. It's a good item purchase and it seems to be working okay for him. Like, he's, he's doing okay there. Yeah, Divine, divine Ruin is a, is a bad item. The stats on it are bad, but that passive, 40% reduced healing and generation with an Agni that has abilities like bombs that you can just consistently rain, rain down on, the one key thing that Maniac brings to the table is going to be brought down. Ooh. There goes that healing reduction, and Zindern's here. He wants to make something happen. Maniac is still pushing up. This is the bait. Oh, He's going to bait them into doing something. They know, they know. It, See, his, it, yeah. it was overbaited. Oh, yeah. is it? Because Zinder's still going to go in, but now they've, that Mercury's not going to be in a position right this time. This Vanish comes out, going to get a little bit of poke by immediate back off. Full disengage. Meanwhile, left hand side, we're going to see some aggression from Captain Twig zoning them away as the Gold Fury is contested on wall placements right now. And Badger and Reels looking like they want to fight with Captain Twig right now. Right, there's going to be more aggression in the left hand lane. But, you know, coming over to this. To the, I. I I really like that play, and we're going to have to return to it right now because Zinder's chasing down Captain Twig. He oh, misses missed. both shots out of the ultimate. Oh, Zinder's in Zinder. trouble. Badger gets the last hit with the burp after he was decimated by Habois, and Reels is going to go ahead and claim the life of Kanye. Immediately SK turning Gaming. off the gold here. SK Gaming looking on fire today. They're taking on Agilitas, and we said this is a really important game for both these teams, but SK Gaming have come out of the blocks today and just taken this game by the scruff of the neck and are looking to keep applying the pressure and go on and try and continue in this tournament. Exactly, you know, and I, I really love the play that just happened in the solo lane. That was a fantastic was. fight over here, but it was generally just burst damage. The fight in the solo lane really exemplified what these two bring teams bring to each other. So, SK Gaming was playing it smart by baiting into the fact that they had a Mercury down the lane. Unfortunately, she baited so hard. Agilitas aren't stupid. They can put two and two together. You're up in the middle of the lane with no safety. We know there's a Mercury. <laughs> exactly. So they Why waited. are you standing still? Why are you standing so, still? <laughs> so they waited just long enough for, for SK Zero to leave and then engage. Perfect strategy coming out for both of these teams. It's the micro thoughts that make these teams what they are. And it's great to see the thought processes envelop like we just did. So Golf Fury now down, going in favor of SK Gaming. Mid camp spawning once again. SK Gaming getting the right hand one, left one not going to spawn for the time being. However, these experience camps in mid left are keep going in favor of SK Gaming consistently. With the Golf Fury down, like this, this lead's getting bigger and bigger. Really is. We're 22 minutes in, folks. 5,600 gold in the way of SK Gaming. The experience is as well lopsided. 9,600 experience with the death of that jungle camp. So SK Gaming is securely in the driver's seat. That said, Agilitas is definitely not out of this. There's a lot of smite to be played. 
and they could definitely no. one or two objectives. And right now, Zeros is in a bit of a tizzy. Yeah, Zero's going aggressive on Prime, but he forces out the ultimate from Kanye Life and immediately disengages. So Kanye not going to have his ultimate online for a little while for the time being. Going to rotate over to this right side, but Zero's got Sonic Boom Charge. He's looking for something on Comfrey. Comfrey's going to get hit by it, and now Mayday's going to land the kiss, but immediate beads usage. Good usage from Comfrey to escape the kiss, otherwise that could have spelt certain death. But look at the rotation. Agilitas rotating over here to defend, not going to find anything as Captain Twig. Well aware of what was going on, as was SK, as they've all transitioned to the mid and right-hand side as well. Four members for Agilitas in this solo lane. Only three for SK. But Habwa's caught out in a little bit of a problem. Kind of even on him very low, but he brings oh, Confrey God even free. lower. Zeros goes ahead and gets the final hit. That's going to be a one for O trade, but SK Apollo's is coming. not down. They're here. Apollo is coming in. Going to look to try and tear this one around. He's in there. Going to go some Captain Twig. Great ages, though. Blocks so much damage. And then the crushing wave across it. Captain Twig. He's starting to clean house as well now. He's still alive with the support of Maniac on the Aphrodite that got through picks and bands. It's making an impact right now. And Zindern is trying to limp away as the doves bleed him. The cannon comes out and SK Gaming clean up. Meanwhile, Reels is split pushing to victory as they consider the fire giant. Captain Twig and Maniac single-handedly won that fight, Hindu man. That was Captain crazy. Captain Twig decided that he was going to stay in with 10% or less HP. Maniac recognizing this immediately kisses drops the dub. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Aegis. And then the undying love came out, the ultimate from oh. Aphrodite, just preventing Captain Twig from dying. He ults over the entire team, team. fight. Yep. Throws a water cannon. Fire Giant is SK Gaming's because of the mid solo bomb. Reels wasn't even there. He was he got two towers in the meantime while that happened. He took down the second tier two tower. They got Fire Giant as well now. It's twelve to two. SK gaming and in a great position. All they need to do now, I feel, right this second after is group up and push on because Captain Twig is having a blinder, as we'd say in the UK. He's playing a blinder. And alongside Maniac on that Aphrodite together, they're gonna be unstoppable if this continues this week. <laughs> like, SK is just doing Everything right right now. We we just applauded the mechanics of the mid and solo lane. Hunter did exactly what he needed to do. Recognized his team was all right. 4v5ing. Continued to PvE down the lane. Got both towers. And now the team is taking away the entire jungle. Shout out to Badger as well. Picking up two kills for himself with those belches. Making a big difference for his team. So it's nice getting kills as a support, I must say. At least when you're in a winning team, getting the kills as a support. If you're ahead, it's great to get them as a support. Sonic Boom being charged by Zero. So looking for an opportunity. It's Badger. Look how tanky it is right now. Just able to tank this up with the Fire Giant buff as well as the Chug. Going to reduce the amount of damage taken. And on top of that, he's got an Aphrodite to just sustain him back up again. They're going to keep on sieging. They know they have a lead. They have not just a Fire Giant, but an 11,500 gold lead. Fire Giant's going to extrapolate okay. that even more so. They're just going to push. Sonic Boom's going to be charged just as a scare tactic. Bandit bounces in the back to push people out. Oh, Real Zex gets a kill in addition to the Phoenix. That's going to be the first Phoenix, folks, at 26 minutes. They're going to push on to this left one, and this could be a game-winning siege, believe it or not. It could well be, as this left one is starting to get chunked down. Effect by reels as you see badger zoning out with captain twig phoenix gains a half health and there's not a lot agilitas can do here against that and a good call from sk gaming to just fully disengage and start rotating around more than likely gold fury followed by right hand side will be the call yeah i do like the call to play it safe i think as i, as I said it could have been a game oh no bait push. But, Agil but Agilitas might have been able to turn it around. And they're just going to bait again. They turn around immediately on a pretty prime, faking the turn to Goldfree. Badger takes down him. Captain Tweet grabs Confrey with oh, wow. the knockup. The surrender vote is out. Agilitas wants no more of this. this SK Gaming rotating around now for the last tower standing on the map in favor of Agilitas. And since the start of this game, honestly, I thought it's been an uphill battle for Agilitas. Since Zero's got that kill very early on, he helped snowball his lanes at the start and has made a big impact. And then Captain Twig really did show off some skills today. 
Yeah, and you know, Zindern is a competent, very competent jungler. I think that it wouldn't be a stretch of the imagination to say that Jiltas' most powerful player is Zinder. As I, I think, I think pretty, Pro, I think uh, pretty prime and Kanye are very, very good players. But Zinder is generally lauded as the player for Jiltas, shutting him down in the picks and bans phase before shutting him down before you can even do combat on Loki. Zinder might play a good Loki, but it's it, nothing compared to the three gods that were banned out by SK Gaming. Yeah. So a combination of their play on the battlefield and fantastic play in the picks and ban stage is what's leading them to a 16,000 goal differential and a 22,000 experience lead. I mean, the one question on my lips right now was, was Agilitas' game plan to have Loki jungle? Yes or no? And that, that will come down to it overall. I mean, if we ever find that one out, that'd be interesting to know because if it was the game plan, it's not worked out. If it wasn't, then you've got to give full credit to SK with that pick and ban phase that made an impact on them and made them have to look at using Loki in the jungle instead of where they pro may have wanted to put him in the first place. But Gold Fury going down now for SK Gaming. Fire Giant's not up for a little bit longer. But with all three Phoenixes down, this is almost undefendable right now from Agilitas. But they're holding on hope. They have to because, you know, this is week nine and we know how important each and every point is to these teams right at this stage, after. Yeah, you're 100% right with your analysis of the jungle. Like, knowing this team a little bit, and of course, I don't know everything. I could definitely be wrong. I don't think Loki was initially picked for the jungle. Uh, I think he was definitely picked for the solo lane. And Zinder, or maybe even possibly mid, but Zinder enforced into playing the Loki. They went ahead and opted for Agni to go in the solo lane for Confrey. And, you know, it's, it's, it's showing. SK is camping the Fire Giant. It's about to spawn. Zinder knows he's right here. They're going to chase him off. Zinder is only level 16, Hindu man. Well, everybody, with the yeah. exception of the support, is already 20 for SK. This is for all intents and purposes. A free fire this is the last hope. This is the last hope of a desperate team for Agilitas now. If they give away this fire giant, I can conclusively say SK will win this game. And it doesn't look like Agilitas are going to defend this. They're too busy defending the base from the fire minions and pushing out these lanes. And this is going to be such a big ass for them. They have only a titan, no phoenixes, and a fire giant team to defend against. It's going to be such a tough ask for them. What can they do? Apollo recalling right now back to base. He's actually going to use his ultimate to try and jump in on the backside here. This could be the last stand of a desperate team. Can they make anything of it? Yeah, standoff is going to be a huge deal. If Agilitas does stop this siege, they can come back eventually. But if like 17,000, that's a big uphill battle. But here's the fight, ladies and gentlemen. Captain Twig has already taken out Confrey. That's a solo later down. Atraxia is very low. He's going to go down almost in tandem with his support while Zeros claims the life of the enemy jungler. It's five people against this Titan. Pretty Prime can't do much about it. That's going to be the game for SK Gaming, ladies and gentlemen. SK Gaming moving on over Agilitas, going to secure themselves to be ahead of Agilitas at least, going into the final week, and they're going to get the opportunity to play against Cloud9 in the next round in the semi-final. On the other half of the bracket, just so you know, Team Solo mid will be facing off against I5 in the other semi-final, so I5 beating over Team Bully. Um, we're going to see a replay now, f -top. Yeah, it's going to be the fight just before they got Fire Giant. Why don't we load up the clip and take a look at how well SK handled this fight. I mean, SK Gaming overall have played fantastically throughout. Their positioning overall and the decision making on some of the aspects of their play has been fantastic through and through. And really put it to Agilitas this week. And one thing to say about overall on SK's play, F dot is that TSM said SK were the toughest team. Their toughest opponents they have faced were SK Gaming. And you can kind of see why SK was, uh, sorry, TSM was saying that when SK puts on a show like that today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, SK, you know, I, I think Agilitas played well. Their warding was on point. You know, their their mechanics were good. They got some good counter ganks, but SK right. Gaming is just a completely different beast than we're used to seeing Hindu, man. This was just outstandingly played by SK. Two deaths on their entire team compared to the enemy's 19. SK Gaming is back. They really are back. It is, it is really, really bad for SK. And what a time to do it as well, f -dot. They've had such a rough run in the tournament, having to face Team Solo midweek after week. But just when it was this important, I need to put my finger on the camera, this important to get themselves back in it, the crunch time is here. SK Gaming making a late run to make it to the LAN tournament. And 
to be honest, if they keep playing like this, I, I can't see them not going. A hundred percent. You know, one thing I want to point out before we uh, toss it to a break is that chat was very smart. They did notice that there wasn't a weakening curse on um, Agilitas until very late in the match. And that caused a lot of issues. And part of the reason that Maniac was able to be so dominant. So good catch by chat. We have a lot of smart people going on there. And uh, just main reason why that one we saw maniac do such good work protecting hawa the entire time but that's it for that one sk is going to take the victory we're going to go Crazy. into our next matchup which is also going to be just as exciting team solo oh, mid versus i5 in our next one stay tuned you're not going to want to miss that <laughs>